to my YouTube channel. My name's Hazel and I'm coming to you from Mid Wales in the United Kingdom. Uh, this is a spinning, weaving, knitting, crochet, hand dyeing podcast. Um, it's anything to do with wool, anything that I find to do with local sheep wool, I will include in this podcast. Uh, we've had a lot of rain over the last 24 hours and the sun is now out but the ground is still far too wet for me to film outside so I thought I'd do a different kind of video today and uh, come into the workshop and do um, something to do with beginners knitting. I had a question recently from somebody um, about what you needed to um, acquire to become a knitter and I thought that that was a very good question that an awful lot of would-be knitters probably do ask. Um, so I thought that today would be a good opportunity, while I can't be outside, to come in here for a while and uh, go through some of the equipment that you need for knitting, uh, what you would need as a beginner knitter, what you would need to buy, um, and really how you can acquire those things. A lot of these things you can buy in charity shops, you don't necessarily have to buy them new. A lot of wool nowadays is sold in places like Aldi and Lidl um, and charity shops. So you don't necessarily have to actually physically go into a wool shop and spend an, a load of money um, on wool that you may or may not enjoy using. You can actually start off very cheaply. Today I'm wearing my Maya cardigan again because in this room there isn't a heater and it's very cold so I thought that this was a good thing to put on today. So yeah, I'm really getting a lot of wear out of this cardigan and really enjoying it. Um, but that is discussed in a previous video. So let's get started with the video. The main thing that you need when you're starting out as a knitter is a pair of knitting needles and a ball of wool. My recommendation to you would be to buy a set of 4mm needles or 5mm needles because um, they are a good medium range needle, not too fine, not too chunky. So while you're getting used to holding the needles in your hands and how to use them and what you do with them, I think that is a very good starting point for a set of needles. So I would recommend a set of 4mm or a set of 5mm. You also need one, you need a ball of wool basically. You can buy as many balls of wool as you want, but really just to learn the basic stitches, you need a ball of wool. And I would recommend either using a double knit weight or an iron weight, because that again is a good medium gauge wool. Um, to start off with. So you can get used to how you hold the wool, how you would work that with the needles, how you would do the stitches with that. It would give you something decent to hold on to um, when wrapping the wool around the needle uh, to do the stitch. So I just think that that is a very good place to start. And whenever anyone asks me about knitting, I always say if you're going to start, use a 4 mil needle and a ball of wool that's either a double knit or an iron weight. Again, you can get that relatively cheaply in a pound shop in Lidl, in Aldi. Um, you can even get 400 gram balls in Aldi and I think they're about 3 99 something like that, or pound stretcher. Any of the cheap shops sell wool. Wilco's, I've bought wool in Wilco's before, so you don't necessarily have to go into a wool shop. I would highly recommend a wool shop because it's a great, brilliant experience being able to go into a wool shop, but uh, yeah, if you don't want to go into a wool shop, a good thing to buy is something in one of the cheaper wool shops. Right, so next thing is knitting needles. You can buy different types of knitting needles. You can buy wooden needles, you can buy metal needles, uh, you can even buy plastic needles. I do think I have a plastic needle here. Uh, is that plastic? Yeah, I've got plastic. Yeah, you can buy wooden needles, you can buy plastic needles, you can buy metal needles. It depends really what is your preference. You can buy circular needles, you can buy interchangeable needles. There's so many different varieties of needle these days that you don't have to stick to just one. In fact, you can use them all at different times depending on the project that you're knitting. But I would recommend, as a beginner, that you start off with a wooden pair of needles, a bamboo set of needles like these. These are relatively cheap, easy to buy, available in most wool shops. You can even buy them in eBay um, as a complete set ranging from around a 2mm needle up to I think a 10mm needle. It's either an 8mm or a 10mm needle and they were about £4. I think I bought a whole set for about £4 from China. So yeah, you can get them very, very cheaply. They're not expensive to buy. So as a hobby to start with, it's not really that expensive. So yeah, I'd recommend bamboo needles. I have quite a range and variety of bamboo needles, um, but yeah, the 4mm is a good one to start with. I think this is a 4 here. 
um, yeah and then there's a plastic needle I've lost the end off this one but this is a plastic needle I think this is one of the ones I first learned to knit with when I was six years old um, I asked the lady if I could keep the needles when she taught me so I think that's one of them um, and then there's metal needles as well this is a metal needle so as you can see there's a variety of different types there's metal there's plastic and there's the bamboo so really it's up to preference but what I would say is if you're prone to arthritis pain in your joints I wouldn't use metal needles to start with because when I first learned to knit I was told what I worked in a wool shop 20 years ago and the lady who taught who helped me to learn to knit again said to me if you find you've got arthritis pain don't use metal needles because the reverberation from the the catching of the needle when you knit the needle went like that you do tend to find that that pain goes up your arm and it can affect your wrists it can affect your fingers and it can actually be quite uncomfortable and make people want to give up knitting so I do I do recommend highly using bamboo needles because once I started using bamboo needles all that arthritis pain went because you find that the needle actually absorbs the friction of the wool and the friction of the movement of the needles rather than your joints and your arm absorbing that um, pain so yeah I would recommend a bamboo needle and um, the next thing you want is wool I do have a bit of a range of wool here to show you but what I would recommend personally is a double knit wool. This one is a double knit, it's by King Cole, it's homespun, called homespun. It's alpaca, where are we, it is 32%, 22% merino, 22% alpaca and 23% acrylic. And then it's got polydamide and viscose in as well to make up the other percentage. So this is a nice wool. I, I knit a jumper with this for my mum for Christmas. Um, and this is a double knit. Now it is quite, to me it is quite a fine double knit. But I think for a beginner on a set of 4mm needles it would actually be a nice soft wool to use. And I think I paid 2 99 for 50 grams. I think yeah it's 50 grams and I think it was 2.99 a ball so that yeah that's relatively cheap to start with this is my hand spun yarn which I I spin myself from local sheep wool now this is more of a chunky weight or a bulky weight um and this kind of thickness can be quite good if you want to knit a scarf um as you can see it's got quite a bit of thickness to it um, so for a beginner starting off knitting a scarf, that weight would be a very good weight to use. This one is 100% wool still with the lanolin in, so it makes your hands nice and soft. That is the good thing about wool, is it does make your hands feel nice and soft when you're using it, but it can be expensive. So as a beginner, you want to start as cheaply as possible to see if you're actually going to enjoy the hobby. Um, this one is a mohair. And if I can find an end, I'll show you. This one is incredibly fine. Now, for a beginner, I mean, even as an experienced knitter, 20 years knitting, I find mohair incredibly difficult. I find it difficult when doing lace stitches. I've, I've tried and I've given up many, many times because it's just so fiddly. And if you make a mistake, you can't rip it back because all the little hairs, the little halo on it just gets all stuck together. And yeah, it's very, very frustrating. So as a beginner, I wouldn't recommend mohair at all to start with because you just end up getting yourself in a knot, getting frustrated and leaving the hobby and never coming back because it's that off-putting to start with. I mean, it's lovely to knit with if you're just doing a basic stitch, like a stocking stitch, which is just a knit and a purl. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it as a beginner at all because... It's just so frustrating to knit with when you can't undo your mistakes. So, yeah, I would leave that one on the shelf. Um, the other one I've got is a four-ply, which is this one. Now, this one's from Shills Day Yarns up in the Isle of Skye. I think it's called uh, the Sky Wool Shop now, and it's run by Kirsty. When I bought it, it was run by Eva. Uh, who retired a few years ago and now it's run by Kirsty and her husband 
um, or partner. So yeah, this is a four ply. I would recommend Shills a Day Yarns um, till the cows come home because I love it. But um, yeah, this one, um, it's quite fine. Um, as a beginner, you might find it a bit difficult to use in your hands, especially if you've got bigger hands as, as a man or um, you find it difficult grabbing things sometimes. Um, you might find this a bit difficult because it can be quite fine. It can be quite slippy on the uh, needles when you're not used to the how wool feels in your hands. Um, so maybe leave that one until you're a little bit more experienced, that thickness wool. Right, this one's a cotton. This is a commercial yarn that I bought in the pound shop the other week for a pound and it's 100% cotton um, so you may enjoy knitting with cotton. It's not something I particularly enjoy knitting with. It feels like I'm knitting with string but I've bought it to put in my weaving to try and use it in weaving some rugs. Um, but this is natural cotton. It is 100 grams. It is machine washable at 40, uh, 30 degrees. And it's knit on a 5 to 6 mil needle. So, yeah, this would be a good one to start with if you want to try cotton. If you don't particularly want to use acrylic or sheep wool. So, yeah, that's a good thickness to use. And that one was a pound a ball and you get 100 grams. And they had it in cream as well. So you could do a nice combination of colours with that one. Um, this is a commercial yarn. This is a baby wool. And this one is a James Brett. And these work out, I think, when I bought this one. It was about £4 a ball, I think. It is acrylic. It is very soft because it's a baby wool. And it's 100 grams. So, yeah, that's another good wool to, chop to try. James Brett. I don't know whether you can see the label. A bit bright. There you go. The label may have changed slightly since I bought it because I bought it 20 years ago. So... Yeah. Um, if you want to knit socks, there's some nice funky colours available. There's the label there. I crochet with this because it makes some really nice blankets. But as a beginner, you could get a nice funky rainbow scarf out of it. I think I paid about two ninety nine a ball for this one. And this is a hundred percent acrylic and knit on four mil needles so this one would be ideal for you there's the label there so yeah as you can see there's quite a range of wools available um enough for anyone's budget if you if you're unemployed and you have no money you can actually as you can see go to a pound shop buy 100 grams of wool for a pound you can probably buy a pair of knitting needles in there as well and for two pounds you're on your way you get you can get started so it's not really an expensive hobby to start it starts getting expensive when you want to use designer yarns or you want to use wool 100% wool fancy wool um, I find a lot of the knitting podcasts tend to recommend expensive wool um, so yeah as a beginner pound shop Aldi little charity shops are good places to go to find wool while you get used to doing what you're doing while you get used to the stitches while you're experimenting with different things to knit like jumpers cardigans scarves cowls hats they're good ways to get involved in the knitting community without having to spend a lot of money and feel like it's beyond your budget so that's the first thing that i would recommend is needles and wool that's all you need. You don't need anything else to start, just those things. As you progress in your knitting journey or experience, hobby, whatever you want to call it, um, there are other things that will help you with your knitting, that will help you to be able to pick your knitting up and put it down. Um, yeah, I will just go through a few of those things with you now. I have my little bag here in my little Kath Kidson bag of what's called notions. I keep stitch markers in here, I keep my tape measure in here, I keep my scissors in here. Um, yeah, I keep a lot of my things that I need to hand in one place by the side of my chair or under the, the coffee table. So when I'm knitting of an evening it's easy for me to grab a hold of the things that I need um, and they're all to hand in one place so nothing gets lost. Um, so yeah, there's a thing called stitch markers which are very handy 
because if you're changing colours when you're knitting a scarf or a jumper or you're doing colour work you need to be able to keep a note of where you're up to in the pattern um, and sometimes a pattern will tell you to um, knit 20 rows in stocking stitch before you go on to the next thing say for example so what you would do is you would put your little stitch marker this is called a stitch marker it's like a little safety pin you would put that on your jumper say this is my knitting uh, I've got anything, have I? Yeah. say this is my knitting you put it through the stitch like so and then you can keep a count of where you're up to before you have to do anything else or where you're down to in the pattern so it's just a really useful tool to keep a note of where you're up to in the pattern without having to try and memorize everything just this little simple stitch holder simple safety pin will save you a lot of anguish of rereading the pattern 10 million times to try and find out where you were up to the night before or 10 weeks ago um, and yet you can just easily say ah there's the stitch marker count back how many rows you've got to do you've done and then you'll know how many rows you've got left to do and for me that's so invaluable because I can knit a I can knit something and take a year to knit it I have a shawl scarf on the the go at the moment and I've been knitting that for two years now if I didn't have one of these I would have to undo that pattern every single time I went back to that pattern to try and find out where I was up to because sometimes a pattern for me just it's just something that's going to take a long time to knit because of how my brain works um, it has a lace design in it it has bumps in it and yeah it's just every section it's like 22 rows and then you go on to it and do it again and do it again and if I didn't have one of these I'd just get lost I wouldn't know where I was going so yeah I keep them in my little handy tin um, and that just keeps them all together and then that goes in that little bag um, you can get different types these are ones I make and I put in my Etsy I sell in my Etsy shop this one's called a progress keeper don't know whether you can see him. There's a little sheep and he's got glass beads on and I sell these in my Etsy shop. I also do them as um, little gadgets, to, little dangly things to put on your scissors. So yeah that's a progress creeper. That will do the same thing as that little plastic one, as this one. You can use it for exactly the same thing to mark off where you're up to in your knitting, put that on and then use that to keep a marker as to where you're at with the pattern. That's got a little hook on it on the end, like a little key ring clasp, necklace clasp on the end. So that's that. These ones are stitch markers. Again, these are in my Etsy shop. I make these myself. They're made of glass beads and a little tiny toadstool on the bottom um, and they come in sets of four in my shop but you can buy them anywhere you don't necessarily have to have mine um, but yeah again these are very very handy um, I use them when I'm doing knitting in the round when I'm knitting the jumper and that just will mark the beginning of the round so I know that every time I come back to that that is the beginning of another row because when you're knitting back to front you've got you know where you're up to but when you're knitting in the round you don't have that division of rows like you do knitting back and front back and front back and front so yeah these little gadgets are extremely handy so I use those as well another thing that you'll need is a sewing up needle because if you're making a jumper in pieces you will need to be able to have a needle that's big enough to thread the wool through to be able to sew it up into a garment so I would recommend one of these one of these and um, you can get them in metal and you can get them in plastic I've got both I prefer the plastic because they're a bit easier the uh, metal ones just there so I prefer the plastic this one but you can get the metal as well um, and they come in a two pack in the wool shop for about £1.50 I think these ones are pony needle, knitting up needles and they're actually called knitter's needles as well so they're very handy so 
so again I keep them in my little in my tin another thing that you will need is um, a row counter because if you're going to be knitting backwards and forwards it's handy to have a row counter and what you do with that is it's a little gadget like that which has numbers on it and these little white things here are what turns the dial so that you can mark it every row and this goes on your needle all the way to the end of the needle like that and then you've always got it whatever you're doing you've always got that row counter on the end of your needle I found these very useful when I was beginning to knit when I used to knit backwards and forwards in a pattern I don't tend to do that anymore because I don't like the sewing up I'm just lazy so I tend to look at patterns where it's knitting the round, knitting one piece or the only thing you have to do is sew up under the arms like this cardigan was um, and I'm just lazy. <laughs> I just don't like sewing in all the ends and trying to make sure that it's all sewn up properly. I've, maybe it's something that I should learn to do properly and then maybe I could knit more things in pieces but yeah this is a useful little gadget here. Whatever you're knitting you do really need a row counter. Um, and as I say that just slides onto the needle you can get them in uh, this one is a I think it's two and a half mil up to a five mil and then there's another size which I can't I haven't got to hand at the moment and that's a five and a half up to an eight I think and they come in a two pack and they're about a pound one pound fifty so they're not expensive you can get them in the pound shop as well so I keep them in my other tin which is slightly bigger these ones are really cute these ones are Emma Ball and I love these I've got little sheep on so they're Emma Ball and so is my other one this other one's got puffins on it so there's no excuse I always know what's in each tin this is my small stitch markers the other one is my beaded stitch markers so yeah they're from Emma Ball if you look online you'll be able to find them and they were relatively inexpensive but you don't have to own design these tins you can put them in a biscuit tin you can put them in an old tobacco tin any kind of box plastic box whatever you find most useful to keep them in it's just useful to have everything in one place now I've got this little pouch here which I got off my mum for Christmas again with sheep on bit of a theme going really and this one keeps my row counter in I got this as a freebie off one of the knitting magazines I think it was off Simply Knitting and it has a little dial on that side and on that side and that turns the numbers it's also got a little stopwatch type button on the top which you just click when you're knitting I don't know whether you can see the numbers going around there which is very useful so if you're doing say you've got to knit another 40 rows to get to the end before you do the rib on a pattern you can just use one of these and that just clicks it and when you're knitting in the round you're not able to put one of those other row counters on your needle because it it just be in the way it's, it's just no, not useful at all but this one here is very useful so yeah, I'd recommend one of these. I think you can get these on eBay for about a pound, one pound fifty. So they're not expensive. So I keep that in there. I also keep in this one a tape measure because everyone needs a tape measure. Even if you knit in a scarf, you need a tape measure so you can work out how long it is and how long you're wanting to make your scarf. So yeah, they're very useful. I also keep a little pair of scissors in case I need to change balls of wool and acrylic's not easy to snap at all it's it's uh, you can't snap it you'll hurt your hands so a little pair of scissors like this is very useful the other thing I have is a little tiny set of crochet hooks again I think I got this off a knitting magazine these um, and I use these for catching if there's a piece of um, thread that's on the outside of the jumper when I fish finished it these are very useful just to pull that thread through to poke it back through so I keep them in this little purse here this one I don't know who this is by so I'm sorry I can't say where you get this from but uh, I got this off my mum so I think she bought it in the garden centre locally or something so they all go in there and then I know where they are 
Another useful thing you can also have is like a sewing kit. They've got my little progress keepers on them, on my scissors, as you can see. And all this has is a little set of embroidery scissors. If you haven't got a purse and this is all you've got, then it's very useful. But they're my embroidery scissors with my little um, progress keepers on the end. Now they have a bigger hook, a bigger clasp on them so that it goes over the um, scissors. But yeah, they're a really good useful tool to have. So they go in there. It's also got a tape measure in there. And it's also got a little zip as well with some knitting up needles in again. So, so yeah, that's a very useful thing to have. That's just a needlework pouch. I think that was a Kath Kidson. I think I got that in Kath Kidson a few years ago in Liverpool. Can't remember now. Um, another useful thing would be some stitch holders. Now these are useful when you're knitting in pieces and you need to keep hold of the stitches on the neckband for picking up the neckband when you finish the jumper. Um, or sometimes it'll tell you to hold stitches on a needle when you're knitting in the round under the arm like this one did and I think the uh, magnolia one did as well um, and these are very useful you can get them in different sizes there's three three or four different sizes See? this middle one I think was a pony one uh, I think it was about 50p get them in charity shops when people are having a clear out or the older ladies die they tend to have these in the charity shops and then there's these ones as well which are from China and they come in different sizes as well and I've seen these in the pound shop in a set of three or four and they're a pound so they're relatively inexpensive so that's it in my little bag I say you can keep a lot in a small space I also keep my crochet hooks in here as well, my set of crochet hooks. So I've always got them to hand, I always know where they are. So all that goes back in there. I'll put them away and then I won't lose them. So they go back in there. My tins as well. So as you can see, that's quite a full bag. But uh, yeah, I do like my toadstools and I've got a dress in this as well. <laughs> so yeah, that's my Cat Kids and Notions bag. Very useful. Always have it to hand. Always have it nearby. So when I'm knitting, I haven't got to go searching around the house for different things. Um, I've also got cable needles to keep in there as well, which I think is here. If you're doing a cable stitch, you'll need one of these. Um, and there is one with a little hook in it like that a little bump in it kind of does a u shape which i can't find mine at the moment it'll be around somewhere but yeah that's very useful as well so i'm going to put that in there as well right next um yeah the next thing which i really love is my yarn bowl now these are very handy because if you're knitting something like which is small, like a scarf or a hat or something, you can keep it all in here, keep all the colours in here like this. So that's my wool that I'm using for my hat. You can keep it all in there like this and there's a little swirl here for your wool to go through and two little holes next to that for your needles to go through. So I'll take them out. Now if you're knitting, if you're knitting with your wool, you can leave the wool in the bowl thread it through like that and then you can use it like that while you're knitting and your wool stays within the bowl not rolling around all over the place and it's just really easy to keep everything together then when you're finished take your needle and you can pop it through the hole like that and that's just a really useful way to keep all your knitting together keep it tidy Pop it on the bookcase, on the table, whatever. Keeps your wool all in one place. And all you've got to do then is just go and get your bowl, pick your knitting up and you're away. And it looks tidy. 
Um, I wouldn't recommend one of these for a big project like a jumper or a cardigan or something. Uh, but they're very useful when you're knitting a hat and you're knitting with colour work and you want to keep all your colours together. It's just really easy to keep it in there, pick it up, start knitting, put it back down and it's always there when you want it and it's always to hand. So highly recommend one of those. I bought mine on eBay and I think it was about £12, something like that. Um, and it is wool, wood, 100% wood, no plastic, it's all nice and fashioned. So yeah, I would highly recommend one of those. So that's that. <clears throat> right, we seem to be covering a lot today, don't we? The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about as well is as you become more experienced and you want to start knitting garments or you're knitting in the round, you'll need something called a circular needle which basically means that you have a cable in between which means that you can hold a lot more stitches on your needle um, and they come in different lengths these, you tend to find with these needles here, the, the, the straight ones, that if you're knitting a jumper or a shawl, a shawl can have 200 stitches on it, um, can be quite long, um, and if you're using a chunky wool as well, there's no way that you can hold 200 stitches on there and not lose them. So a circular needle is a much better needle to use if you're knitting with a shawl, because a circular needle has a big cable like that and as you can see it's very long compared to the other one compared to the knitting there's the straight needle and that's the circular needle so as you can see it's quite a lot longer this one's an 80 centimetre 75 to 80 centimetre needle so yeah it's a good length so you can hold a good amount of stitches on there and they won't fall off it's got a relatively short needle on it but when you're knitting anyway, you're only really using that part of the needle because your stitches are taking up the rest of the needle. So there, that's your needles. Got one on each end. And when you're knitting in the round, all you do is just continue going round and round in a circle. So these are extremely, extremely useful to use. Um, if you're knitting socks, if you can get a short cable, then I would recommend them but a lot of people tend to use um, straight needles with points on either end. I can't knit like that personally, I prefer these ones. Um, so they're plastic ones. You can get them in metal as well, those ones. Again, you can get them in every size from a 2mm up to a 10mm. You can also get really chunky ones, um, which I've got in bamboo. I keep them, again, all in one place, in a tin, like that, little handle on, always to hand, everything goes inside, just like that, you see I've got all my needles, circular needles in there, so again, if I want a circular needle, I can just pick my tin up, and then find out what size I want, and then just get on with my knitting. Um, on that note, another useful gadget for you is, let me just get this thing, it's called a needle sizer. Now, if you're like me and you own a lot of needles, sometimes they, it rubs off what size they are and you, need, you can't really guess. Or if you're going to a charity shop, you'll often find they're in old sizes um, before what they what came to millimetres. So one of these, this one is a size 8, you pop it through, and you continue to pop it through like that until you find the right size. Now that one says it's an 8 but it's actually 4 or a 4.5mm, four excuse me, it's actually a 4 or a 4.5mm. A so you just go round the dial like that until you find the right size. As you can see, that one's too big, that one's too big, that one is quite tight. So I would say that was a 4mm, like that. Now again, I got this on eBay and it was about £1.50 and I just keep that over there. I've also got one 
which was again was free with one of the knitting magazines in there and that does exactly the same thing. Um, this package here are the needles that I use personally. These ones are called Knit Pro and you get a whole set in there like that and you get from a three and a half mil up to an eight mil needle. Now I love these because these are what's called interchangeable needles. Now as you get more experienced in your knitting you'll find that if you're knitting in the round you don't want to be faffing about changing needles all the time. In fact in any of your knitting you don't want to be faffing about changing your needles all the time but these ones have little cables that come separately like that and all you do is when you're knitting so we pick a needle, there's a little screw end on the end there, you attach your needle, screw it on, one on each end, which I'll just do that for you now, one on each end, like that. You've got all your knitting on there and then it may tell you, tell you to change to down a size to do the rib. All you do is you unscrew it while it's still in your knitting. Choose your smaller needle and screw it back on and carry on with your knitting. You haven't got to fiddle about looking for another needle, looking for another circular needle. Um, you'll know that the gauge is the same as it was when you were doing the rib on the cuffs or whatever. So when you're knitting, I find these invaluable. It's changed my knitting completely. I used to really struggle with my knitting. Um, I used to find that I got frustrated with straight needles because I could never find a needle that suited the wool. I found metal needles extremely frustrating because the stitches slip off and when you've got a lot of stitches on a needle, like 100 stitches on your needle when you're knitting a garment, I found it just incredibly frustrating. So I do find these have changed my knitting completely. I have two bags now at the side of my chair with various knitting projects in and I can just pick them up, put them down. I can knit two garments at the same time that need the same needle size because you get these little stoppers here. You get these little stoppers and all they do is you've got your end so say it's on your knitting you screw that on screw it on tight one on each end one on that end one on that end and then that'll hold the stitches while you move on to another project and then once you come back once you get when you want to go back you just do the same on the other knitting project take the needle off put those stoppers on and go back to the other garment so you're not really having to have so many different needles that uh, you end up with a shed load of needles and you're having to change needles all the time on your garments and it means then you can't knit something else because you're using the needle but these are great they are about 45 pound but you do get a lot of needles for your money so yeah i would recommend them so I'll pop that back in there so that's the Knit Pro needles. Also as well, if you snap the needles, you can buy them readily in any wool shop or on eBay, fairly inexpensively. Um, if you want more cables, you can buy them again on eBay in any wool shop. I get mine in my local wool shop with no problems. They can range in prices for the needles from about £3, I think, up to about £7 for the really chunky ones. Cables are around £2.50 each as well, which I get in my local wool shop. So yeah, it's it's a really good, useful tool to have. But I would only recommend spending that amount of money when you know that you're going to stick at knitting because you don't want to invest out all that money and then find they just sit in the cupboard and you never use them because that's a lot of money to invest if you're not going to stick with the hobby. So they go in my little bag that comes with the needles I'm not sponsored by Knit Pro by the way I just love these needles and would like to share them with you so they come with a bag as well and then you can keep everything in the bag together I do keep my magnifier 
which is very handy for when I'm doing colour work and um, for sometimes in the pattern books the, pa the diagram can be quite small so I find this very useful tool to keep in my knitting bag and in here I also keep my scissors and my little owl that is my uh, needle gauge which tells me the size of the needles if the writing rubs off the other thing that I have is my really deluxe as I call it, chocolate box of needles. This is also a Knit Pro and this was a gift for my for Christmas off my parents a few years ago, about three years ago. Um, and I only bought it because it was a gift and I was given some money to spend on myself and I'd been after this set for ages because I just loved the box as much as anything and the colour of the needles. Um, and yeah, I bought it on Amazon. It was about £60 for the needles. But in it you do get a lot of needles and it is a gift box it's not sort of the kind of thing that you would just buy I would think for your everyday needles but yeah it has every needle in it from three and a half up to an eight the same as the as this one as this kit here um, and inside you get your needles and you also get this little pouch as well um, now sometimes I do find with these that when I use them that on this end you can see the numbers are still on the needle but then on this end the needles the writing is rubbed off and I do find that the more I use them with the wear of the uh, wool on the needle that the writing does rub off so one of these is definitely a valuable tool to have when you're using those needles because they have to have it uh, stamped on the actual needle itself whereas on these needles here the bamboo straight ones the needle size is on the end so yeah or on the end stopper the sunlight's gone the, the light's gone really bright there it is so yeah it's very useful to have one of those needle sizes in with your interchangeable needles now in this little bag here are your cables, you get three different sizes in there, a 60 and 80 and 100 centimetre. Um, so the good thing about these is that you get a little joining piece like this. So if your cable that you have isn't long enough, you can actually, if I can get that to focus, you can actually put these on the end of the needle and join needles together. This is a female piece, so that it has the same end on it as the needle there and then they will screw onto the end of the cable and you can join cables together. So that's really useful if you're knitting something like a hap and you've got hundreds of stitches on, say 300, 400 stitches on a needle, then that would be very useful, that little thing there. But again, that's only when you become a more experienced knitter would I ever say go out and spend this kind of money on a set of needles. Unless you want to buy all the tools, but it's, which is easy to do, but I, I personally wouldn't. This set here is another Knit Pro Symphony. As you can see, there's a theme here. I do like Knit Pro Symphony. I haven't tried anything else really, but yeah, this set here has needles in it. 8mm, 10mm and a 12mm. There's the 12 which is really useful for knitting things like big chunky cowls or chunky scarves. Um, so something like this again is my hand spun. Um, something that kind of thickness would be useful on that really chunky needle. I think you can get them up to a 20mm in the Knit Pro Symphony. So yeah, you could knit something that thickness on that kind of thickness on one of those needles so that's my hand spun that's what I use in my rugs when I'm weaving um, so I think that's it really for today I can't think of anything else um, what I would say in closing is that by give knitting a go if it's something you've been wanting to do for a while definitely have a go it's a most enjoyable hobby it's relaxing it's meditative um, I find at the end of a long day it's a great hobby to have unwind 
my reasoning for taking up knitting was I wanted something to do while I was watching TV. That was my excuse 20 years ago was while I was watching the telly of an evening I wanted something to do with my hands because I felt that I was just wasting time just sitting there watching the telly aimlessly. Um, so when I worked in the wool shop a lady who I worked with said oh you'll never forget it you'll, you'll easily take it up again. So because I worked in the wool shop I thought oh that would be a good idea for me to learn to knit and then I can recommend wool to people. So that was where it started for me really. I did learn when I was six years old um, at a New Year's Eve party the daughter of the gentleman who was having the party taught me to knit and as I say I've still got this needle um, and the other needle somewhere as well and it was called um, odd pin knitting at the time and you knitted on two different size needles which was fun. I think I knit a scarf that way at that point. I don't know whatever happened to it but uh, yeah, I, I was about six, so when I did learn again, when I was uh, in the year 2000, uh, when I was, what, 26, 27? So it was a good while between times knitting, um, I did pick it up relatively quick, quickly, but I was a nervous knitter, so I only really knit stocking stitch and knit stitch for all I would say about 10 years. Um, I did branch out once I think into doing cable stitch and quickly undid it because I, I didn't like it when I'd knit it up. I'm one of these knitters that if I don't like something I just rip it out and just put the wool back in storage again. So um, yeah I, I would recommend it. I would highly recommend it as a hobby but I wouldn't go ahead and plough in and buy loads of equipment at the beginning. I would just buy a ball of wool and a size 4 or 5 millimetre needle and start there. Learn the basic stitches. There are just two stitches. Knit and purl. Everything you will ever knit in your lifetime as a knitter will come from those two stitches, knit and purl. Um, there are a combination of those stitches where you wrap the wool round for the needle to do increases and do lace stitches but other than that it's just two stitches casting on casting off and that's it that's all you'll need to know once you've learnt those four things cast on cast off knit purl any pattern you want to make will just be a combination of those things so yeah I would highly recommend it as a hobby if you get stuck and you want any more advice, please do leave comments in the comment section below um, or send me a message via Facebook or Instagram. I'm on Instagram as hashtag faithful you. Um, so leave some pictures on there if you want to, to show me what you're up to and show me how you're getting on with your knitting. Um, and I'm also on Facebook as faithful you. You can message me there and I will get back to you and help you in any way I can. And as I say, leave a comment in the comments section in this video and if I can help you, I will do. So that's it for today. Um, I'm going to go back out and enjoy the garden now because the sun's come out. Um, and I will see you next time. So bye for now.